Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a VOD um, of a professional Rocket League player actually uh, who is uh, dipping his toes into Valorant. He is currently Platinum 3 and uh, I'm going to be going over his video and I'm going to be talking about uh, the way he plays the game and what I think he can do better. So let's jump into it. Alright, so we're going to start out with the pistol round and uh, they are going into C site. They started at A but they wrap back to C after uh, they noticed that the enemy team had over rotated. Um, and now right here, uh, immediately I noticed that they're on completely different pages. Uh, this happens quite a bit throughout the VOD, but this Viper is pretty much strictly playing for post-plant, um, but him and his teammates both go to take sites. I think that if you're going to have a player like a Viper who's playing pretty much a dedicated post-plant with Molly lineups the whole time, um, you should kind of follow the same... You should do the same thing as him in the post plant, right? So if he's playing post plant, then you guys should also get off site and play post plant. The problem is, is that this Viper's Molly lineup relies on <clears throat> planting the bomb in default, right? And as we know, this is not a good spot to play long from. Um, so the problem with this isn't so much the fact that you go to play site because you kind of have to play site when you plant like this. The problem is that this Viper has Molly lineups that aren't good, and instead the in an ideal situation, you have bomb planted right here, um, and then Molotovs would go in on this spot, and you guys would be able to use the spam because uh, this is pretty common in pro play. But um, it happens on B and it happens on C, where like uh, you plant the bomb right next to a box like this, and it cuts off half of the angles that somebody could stick it from, right? Um, so you plant the bomb right next to it, you all go long, and then you don't have to spam as wide um, in order to kill the diffuser, right? The same thing goes on B, where you plant in this corner over here. Um, but yeah, I don't like how you guys are doing two different things here in post-plant. Um, but since you guys do decide to play on site, let's talk about this setup. Uh, you go to play plat, you have your jet and your brim both looking towards CT. And then you peek out and you swing CT. Um... I think in general your Brimstone's playing a really bad spot there. I think he's probably his his positioning's probably the worst out of all of yours. Um, I liked your plat spot, so something that I think would work a little bit better. Um, if your Brimstone had played default, if you stayed here, you take contact on garage, you fight garage, and then your Brim and then say you get a kill on garage, you dismiss towards long, and then your Brimstone gets the second kill on the guy running out of garage, and you create like a natural crossfire between the two. Um, but Overall, pretty poor post-plant positioning, and it wasn't so much aim or, like, movement or, like, anything, like, mechanics-wise here that cost you this round. It's just very, very poorly set up post-plant situation, um, and it got you guys... It, it cost you guys this round, and as you can see, your Viper is now trying to play post-plant solo. So, uh, let's talk about the next round. Alright, so this next round, you guys are doing a C execute. Your Viper's got the wall going up to get you into sight. Um, and as you run up, this is sort of small, but as you're running up, you, you just look at your crosshair. You're not really aiming at head level or like pre-aiming anything. Um, you're aiming like low and out here. Um, you should have your crosshair either like on the wall here, expecting a close peak behind default, expecting that peak or like holding for plat. Uh, you should be holding one of these angles instead of just floating your crosshair out in the middle of the nowhere doing nothing. Um, and now you guys are going up. Your jet throws a smoke, and you're just randomly spamming that jet smoke for no reason. You shoot five bullets, jump into the corner, reload. And now your jet is solo on site right here, and he's trying to do all the work himself. You should have been scaled up with him, and you should be right behind him. Say he dashes out, you flash high, and then immediately you're second one out of the smoke. That's like kind of your role here when you're playing Reyna. And you do it now, but your jet's already taken so much space and has gotten so far ahead that now he's completely untradeable because of that little stutter step that you did in the beginning where uh, where you slowed down to reload after shooting a smoke for no reason for five bullets. So um, just be more aware about your positioning, your scaling. And here there's really no reason to fight this angle. Um, the Viper wall goes down. You guys are planning safe anyways. You might as well just like play back, hold for the push so that the CTs can't push out onto site on you guys. Uh, but instead you swing the back of sight and take a fight that is unnecessary and both get, and gives up your life and a lot of map control. Um, so yeah, that could have been played a lot better by you. I think you need to make sure you're playing a little bit more aggressive and you're not letting your teammates try and take these uh, solo duels when they're in sight. Especially when you're playing a duelist like Reyna where you should be 
where you should be running in and, and trading off your other duelist in tandem. Hey guys, fun reminder that I stream every day from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bumpa. Check out all this great content that you're missing out on. Oh my god. I have a timing. I'm going like mid. Dude, 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 dude. Alright, this round is a really good example of like your problem with scaling and like uh, going up with your team. So, you guys flash out A long, you got a jet running up short right now, um, your breach flash long, and you're look. You're not really taking any space here, right? I, I see that you're trying to hold double box, and I see you're trying to hold left side long with him. Can't spam that, we won't even talk about it, but like, you're holding angles and you're clearing angles that your teammate has already cleared, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's just, there's just no point for you to be back here. Uh, waffling this much on your movement and your like and your decision making, uh, you should definitely not be this late into sight. Um, being all the way in the back with the bomb as a duelist, watching your your other teammates run up and scale, and you not taking any like and you not helping them fight for map control. If there was a guy there that fought your teammate, you would have been completely unable to trade. Um, say your say your breach goes up and he's taking fights and there is a guy at that double box. This double box guy will kill your breach for free, and then you can't immediately peek him and trade him. Instead, you give time for this guy to reset his crosshair placement, reset his movement, and then swing you and give him a better chance of killing you. So, um, just make sure you're make sure you're taking space as your teammates are taking space, um, so that you don't have these large gaps in your movements. And now here, as we go into a post plant. Um, this viper wall is not very good. I would like to he drops it. I don't I would like to see him not put it up anymore Especially since you guys now have this crossfire established where you can play graffiti and under heaven um, You should be tucking into this corner and playing pure crossfire with this jet um, It would pretty much seal the round and make it almost unlosable uh, But instead you peek out and sure you get a kill But even though it works and you end up winning the round with this pick um, It's just something that's important to note and uh and say so that you understand that in the future if like you're in a situation like this again you probably shouldn't be taking these fights honestly this is something i would do probably I would, if we're in a 5v3 and i'm feeling myself i'd probably peek and just throw um but i know it's a bad play and i think that it's important to like i know when i do something dumb i'm just doing it to know you know goof around but i think it's important when i'm doing like vod reviews like this that like i point out stuff like that just so that the people who do it make sure that they know that just because they got that kill doesn't mean that it was a good play like i understand when i'm doing something dumb and it works it's not because it's like a good play it's just because i'm an idiot and i won my aim duel um but yeah hey yo it's kind of sus my guy Anyway, you guys are going for another C execute, Viper Wall. Your scaling's much better here. I like what you're doing a lot more. You're running into sight with your teammate. Your jet's dashing in. You're taking good space. Um, don't know how I feel about the swing through the wall. You know, you got a kill. It worked out. It's whatever. I, I, could, I can't tell if you had some, like, read on him or anything like that. Um, but you push through. And then here, I'm not going to torch you with this. You know this wasn't played well. Uh, you should have dismissed back through the wall instead of continuing to push forward with it. Um, but... You you know you know you didn't play that well. I don't need to harp on it. You know what I'm saying. So uh, we're gonna keep moving on. This right here. I don't know. I don't know what to say about this. Like this just isn't something that would like run, compute in my brain. As but like you you already have a rifle and you buy an op just to peek window. And I mean I kind of get it. You were at max cash. It's whatever. You guys have insane money. It's not a big deal. Um, but I don't know, this, this window peak is still something that I think I'd rather have a rifle for, especially like, it's very clear that you, you don't have very good op movement, like the way that you peak this window is very, very slow, um, and bad. So I think you're, I think you're probably a lot stronger with a rifle. I think in general, almost everybody that's like, I'd say almost everybody, like if you're not like a main opper, like somebody that ops all the time, I'd say it's probably a good idea if you don't pick up the op at all on attack side. Um, opping on attack side is like the thing that like actually takes skill or like it takes a lot more skill than opping on defense. Um, 
especially in like higher higher elos the higher you get into elos but i don't know i don't need to i don't need to go on this too long but i think if you would have just like flash high window and swung this with a rifle then you would have accomplished the exact same thing um but i don't know just watching i think you do you do this twice on attack side and just both times they just didn't go well and i think that you're just i think you're better with a rifle and i just i just don't like the way that this was played and you got no map control out of it two of your teammates died at sea long and while you were just twiddling your fingers back here i don't know it's just it just doesn't seem like an effective use of time it doesn't seem like an effective use of like your default or taking space because you you didn't really do anything with it so those are my two cents but this is kind of a moot point all right so here we have you in a 1v4 it was a 1v5 um just want to say that you were on for the 1v5 um you killed a guy in short and then you rotated to C, but we don't need to watch that um but i want to use this as like an example for what not to do if you're the team that's in this 4v1 situation you you played this pretty well you isolated your 1v1s you did what you needed to do um you didn't win this round but like this this is abysmally played by the enemy team like you could have won this so easily like this this was pretty much not even a 4v1 at any point it was just four it was five 1v1s just across the map like the the sage peeks out ct first he doesn't wait for his team okay the omen peeks you see long gives you another free kill and now you're in a 1v2 full health is reina this is so unbelievably winnable flash garage for info i think you should be a little bit more proactive about peeking garage there maybe you can catch a guy off guard take a fight um, but they both end up coming out CT, you get the jet, and now you're on for the 1v1, and unfortunately you just don't win it, but, like, the jet and the breach right here, these are the only two people that played this semi-well, and even this breach almost tossed by swinging way early, so, if you are the enemy team in this situation, you're playing against a guy who's clutching, the things that you need to understand is that this guy who's clutching needs to find kills in order to even man advantage, so he's gonna be taking fights against isolated players or he's that's the goal of the guy in the clutch so this sage who peaks ct and the omen who peaks c long um they threw this really really hard what they should have done is they should have gotten to wherever they needed to be so the sage should have gotten to like ct spawn and the omen should have gotten to c long and you guys should have just held the exits until or they should have held the exits until breach and jet arrived and then once breach and jet arrive at the choke points where they are say like the jet and the breach come ct with the sage and then the omen flanks long the three people can come out the guy omen can pinch and they guarantee the round one but the way that they played this you should have won this round or at the very least they they pretty much handed it to you on a silver platter um so this isn't so you played this pretty well you isolated your 1v1s you did what you needed to do um but holy crap man these enemies played this abysmally uh, I just wanted to point this out because I thought you played this pretty well. You're breaking the wall. Um, your teammates aren't playing this super well. They're they're fighting while you were still walled off. I don't think you communicated that you were walled off, though. Let me see if I can find it. But you're walled off here. Yeah, you're not calming it to your team at all. You got to tell your teammates, hey, I'm walled off. I can't fight with you guys yet so that they stop overpeaking. I'm sure it probably wouldn't have stopped them. Um, but... So now this guy knows he's in graffiti. Your teammate's actively fighting him, and immediately you recognize that your teammate's fighting him, and you swing out to double peek with him. Uh, even though you didn't get the kill here, I really like that you did that. Um, shows really good awareness to go for the double peek while your teammate's fighting. So I appreciate you doing that and not just sitting there waiting for your teammate to finish this fight before you peek. All right, so I want to talk about this round not because of any like tactical misplays or anything like this, but I want to talk about some problems with your mechanics. Um, so I've noticed you do this a lot, but... The second you see people and you start shooting, you're insta-crouching. Um, and this is a problem because it makes you a stationary target and uh, you're like insta-crouching and like uh, it might mess up your recoil control in the future. But if you watch the way you take these fights, insta-crouch again. Sure, you hit a nice headshot. But I'd like to see you, again, insta-crouch as soon as you see this guy. Uh, but I've noticed this pattern. Every single time you see a player, you are crouching the second you see them and you start shooting. Um... And it makes you a more mobile target, and it makes it harder for you to uh, to isolate 1v1s. Um, right there, again, you just insta-crouched into that guy's headshot. He was probably aiming a little low, but you just you just dropped right into it. So um, I recommend going into deathmatch, unbinding crouch, and just grinding deathmatch without crouch for a little bit, um, and then taking it back into a game. But uh, your move, you don't really like focus on like counter strafing and taking angles one by one. It's more like you peek, you peek, and then you see a guy, insta-crouch, stop, drop, and shoot, you know? Like, 
uh, it doesn't feel very controlled um, and it just sort of feels like you're just uh, panic spraying whenever you see people and sometimes like your aim is good enough that you hit that insta headshot but like if you don't you don't have the bursting and the control needed to uh, to reset recenter and isolate your sh isolate your fights so all right, so this is an eco, but I just want to talk about playing to your gun's strengths. So you have a deagle, and you're playing back plat at sea. You know that the deagle does 145 at really long ranges, so it won't even kill a guy if you hit him in the head. Um, but you're taking this fight anyway. You're taking it against an op and a rifle. And uh, I don't hate the idea of, like, ego peeking with a deagle on, on save rounds. Like, screw it, man. If you're going to make a play, go for it. Um, but I would have liked to see you do, instead of peeking from all the way back here where your gun is pretty much useless, uh, maybe get into this corner at the start of the round or play close over here and try and, like, wide swing and catch them off guard when they're out in the open from an angle that they won't expect and an angle that's going to be a lot closer um, so that you can actually hit the one-shot headshot. Instead of playing this super far back angle, that's going to 100% favor the rifles and the ops that they have bought. So just think about the strengths of your weapons when you're using them, and it will probably help you get a lot more kills on eco rounds. Uh, I'm just going to say this right now, but you played this C-plat a lot on defense as Reyna. Uh, you need to switch up your positioning to make yourself less predictable because this jet is just hard posting on you at this point and it cost you your life again now on a gun round when you peaked so uh change it up play like either close garage play behind default hold logs um play close right uh play in garage retake on c do something but you need to you need to be changing up the way you play the round um where if like the enemy team sees you play that position more than once you're just going to become predictable um and you're going to get red and countered just like this all right, so you and your teammate are in a, it was a 2v4, but your jet just got a pick. He flanked window and uh, caught an enemy off guard. And then he gets another one, actually, who peeks him. Um, and you kill this Reyna. And now this is sort of similar to what I talked about in the round where uh, the enemies played it really bad and you're 1v5. Um, but you're you're not playing this super well right now. You're trying to commit to fights while you're still waiting for your jet to... You need to wait for your jet to scale up, get into sight, so that he can actually trade off of you. Um, this... This sage, oh, what the heck just happened? This, you know, this sage needs to take a fight in order to even up man advantage, and your jet can't see him if he swings on this side of sight up here. So, something that you should be doing is you should just be sitting in connector and you should be jiggling for info to try and figure out the sage's positioning. And then once your jet is closer, can actually fight with you and trade you, then you commit to the fight. But you're taking this, you're taking this fight too early. And now your jet is left alone in a 1v1 um, against a sage who's in post plant. So uh, it turns it turns that 2v1 that you had with a really good probability of winning into like anybody's anybody's guess. It's now a 50-50. Um, so next time, just wait for your teammate. Try and jiggle, get some info, spot out where the sage is playing. Um, and then when your jet can start fighting the guy, then you take the fight with him. All right, so to end this off, uh, I just want to say again, this is like the seventh or eighth round in a row i swear that you've played like back plat at sea um you play here way too much you got to change up your positioning i know i already said this but i just want to say it again um and at the end of this game while yeah you do end up going like 21 and 18 uh you had a lot of non-impact kills right so uh on attack side you didn't really scale up with your team as much uh you weren't getting those initial initial duels um, and then the, uh, most of your kills that you did get on attack side, you had that one round where you almost won a 1v5, which was four kills. And then you had another round where you almost won like a 1v3. That's like eight or so kills that are in clutch that don't really have impact on like the way that the game goes. Um, so while sure your scoreline looks pretty and you're high up on the leaderboard, um, your overall impact on this game was not that high. Um, and... From what I can see, your mechanics are okay. Like, you can hang and plat. It's fine. Um, it's just that it seems like you don't understand how to fight off your teammates and support them when you are both fighting sites and, like, closing out rounds. So uh, mid-round mid decision-making, late-round decision-making um, are going to be a lot more important for you. It's stuff that you need to work on. And I'd also work on the, uh, the whole crouching as soon as you see somebody when you start shooting. So uh, all of these are very easily... Uh, overcomable issues um and uh i'm excited to see you improve in the future man so uh thanks for sending me this vod again flakes and uh i appreciate you dude uh anyways that pretty much sums up the vod review for me uh hope you guys enjoyed it 
uh, I don't do like viewer requested VOD reviews or anything like that. You can't send me a VOD. If I want to make a video, I just ask for one and then first come first serve, whatever. There's not really a, there's not really a way to get me a VOD. So, uh, sorry if you're interested in me doing one of these on you, but it's just not going to happen. I'm not interested in doing coaching. I just do this strictly for content. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if you want to watch me live, if you have any questions that you guys want to ask me, uh, while I'm streaming, you can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Bumpa. And again, if you want to see more educational content like this, funny YouTube highlights, stuff like that, uh, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel or subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave a like on this video. So yeah, appreciate you guys. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Oh,